mics are on for yeah, okay, sorry. Okay, call for the order the June fifteenth park board meeting and roll call. Jim. Uh, all right. Yeah, I can think of Gene oh, Shaw here. There. Yep. Uh, Jim Simonson. Here. Dwayne Morrison. Kelly Tasky. Here. Jesse Saki. Stokey, I'm sorry. I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Perfect. Thank you very much. Jenna Warble. Here. Natalie Peterson. Here. Mike Miller is absent at this time. Okay, is this myself? Uh, no other members of the public right now. There's nobody in the waiting room. So if you want to move on to minutes. Yeah. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the May meeting? I'll move. So, second. Second. Got it. Yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 And then no public discussion. I'll let you take over the continuing business. Sure, exactly. Yeah, no one is here for the public discussion at this time. So we'll move on to continuing business. Uh, item 4 a and update of King Creek Trail, the street and the stream bank restoration. Uh, the contractor out of King Creek Trail made, made great headway. Uh, they're at the point where they're essentially ready just to start paving. Uh, the plan is of late next week to uh, actually start paving that trail and finishing up the side slopes from the road to the control stand. Uh, what they're going to do is leave the last 150 feet just south of Morris Thomas. They're going to leave that just in the class five bed at this stage because St. Louis County is going to be replacing the culvert uh, immediately adjacent to that. It was a fear that um, if that tumors were replaced, it was somehow damaged that would have to be uh, replaced. But for our agreement with St. Louis County, uh, any damage to the existing uh, gravel five, class five base or the side slopes, uh, St. Louis County will replace those. So uh, we're all on board at least from that agreement standpoint. So what I'd really love to see is uh, our July meeting is the media on the field. They can visit these trails here both between Section 24 and the King Creek Trail. Um, if you've not been down there, I think a number of you have seen these to Section 24. Uh, the King Creek Trail is just as nice, if not nicer, because part of it is it will always look like that. Section 24, there may be developed in the future, and maybe the city will see that. Uh, the King Creek will always remain through that uh, natural forested area, so it's quite nice. Uh, in addition to that, the south portion of the park, the St. Louis County Soil Water Conservation District, as well as Minnesota Trout and Limited, have been working on stream bank restoration. Uh, they have uh, worked pretty well finished from the parking lot area to the first bridge, if any of you are familiar uh, with that area there. Uh, they recontoured the slopes. They uh, worked on all that erosion that we passed, especially since that 2012 uh, flood. They've uh, remadded that whole area of landscape. Uh, they're going to be planting trees along that area as well, just to help with some uh, shading for trout habitat that way. Uh, now they're currently working south of that bridge area in that same uh, type of restoration aspect. Uh, they're still planning to wrap this up uh, late June and try to get stuff wrapped up by 4th of July. Uh, they're pretty well in on schedule. I'm going to be on site again tomorrow, so I'll just verify how their schedule is making for that. Uh, one thing that uh, myself and Paul Sands had the opportunity to speak to uh, St. Louis County people for a limited. Um, right now, we have an existing culvert that runs underneath Oakstrom Road. If you go down to the park, you see a couple cones right there. The uh, creek has been eroding into the existing roadbed and causing some issues there. Uh, what Charlie Limited is looking to do is to uh, expedite their schedule in that area. Is there going to do some restoration uh, within that uh, pipe area? So they're going to concentrate on that so that we can get into a nice solid roadbed. They're going to pull that creek away from the roadbed and then try to get, get away from that erosion issue that we're having right now. So that's kind of another good example that we have with the relationship between ourselves and St. Louis County. And that can do some really good work and uh, all very happy to hear that because it would solve 
dimensional problem that he's going to have to address here, but you know, sooner or later, I think that will that. But like I said, right now, uh, we're still operating under a June 30th completion date at Key Creek, as well as Section 24. Um, this is in front of the state right now for a, um, an extension of the schedule to next year this time. I believe yesterday was a, a hearing on it from the Legacy Parks. Uh, there's no action at that point, but at least they did have a, a hearing yesterday. My understanding is still there. But once again, we're still operating under a June 30th completion date for both these trail segments. Uh, likewise, up on section 24, uh, they're just really fine tuning a lot of their uh, trail areas that they have that have to be specifically with the grant. Uh, they've been working up along Maple Grove Road, uh, tying off that trail connection at that point. There's a couple of existing utilities that they've been working with the contractors to get those moves. So uh, that area has, has been, that's what's been the scene of construction work the last couple of weeks. Uh, like I said, the majority of the work associated with our grant and the sanitary sewer in that area is done. And the same thing that we're looking to be paving uh, within the next one to two weeks here to wrap that up. Once again, the different contractors, they're working as well as I think they're the state also. Is there any questions on the trail work at that point? Anything going on? No, it looks great though. Sounds like a lot of work going on. Yeah. Yeah, it's been very busy down there. And uh, I think for the public, for the most part, it has been trying to keep away. There are still some walkers and people in that area, but for the most part, people have been, um, you know, hearing who are asking that they stay out of the area. <laughs> but like I said, looking to really wrap it up in the next two weeks' time here and then uh, get it back open with the public. Yeah. Great addition to the community, for sure. Yeah, it'll be really nice. We're, uh, we're looking forward to that. And, uh, Great work by both contractors, and uh, we've been really lucky with the conditions we've had so far this spring. Uh, I will just hit briefly on and talk a little bit more about the um, park dedication fund, but there is going to be a, a substantial uh, change order coming up from the work at uh, Queen Creek Park. We had two areas of extremely deep muck. I want to say we went down plus or minus nine feet to harvest all that out and then bring back in sand for that. Uh, the city engineer is working with the contractor bike and uh, to finalize that number. And that's when we got to city council to believe that our meeting on the 21st. I think there's a plan for that. I think it was on the expected mm -hmm. date for that. But what we did, we had we one or two options was we could try to harvest existing materials um, within that area, within the trail bed, and try to use that as the underlayment. Uh, we're just concerned for a long term product. That uh, if we have some spongy material under there, we're not doing ourselves any favor. Mm -hmm. And so we decided, Mr. Mulder, a city administrator, to discuss this, and he concurred that yes, we should pull that material out, bring in good sand material, get that next firm base that we need to build the trail. Once again, it's going to last us for quite some time. So at that point, I'd like to move on to the new business. I have uh, a question. I'm sorry, yes, sir. Uh, when you reopen the park, are we? Have we considered about putting uh, signs up? All dogs must be on leash. That we're going to be looking at a whole uh, basically. Uh, we do have those at other parks, but we can add those obviously down at Keen also. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of different signage. Um, if you've seen some of the food fairy signs that are out there, uh, we've done some more through our association with the Region Stormwater Protection Team. We're going to be placing those those along the trail as well, and incorporating more of the, the dog bags, but also um, instead of get more signage, because dogs must remain on leash. Obviously, the big trouble is is the uh, enforcement of that is the tough part. But we will do what we can from the signage standpoint. I am um, working on social media to uh, to get that word out there. The um, at least with the the trail aspect and the, the formal nature of it. That the hope is that you will not see very little off lead dog leash in that area since it's more of a biking pedestrian type area. And the troublesome area though is going to be south of that in our um, mm -hmm. more natural area that we have. And that area is slated for um, this trail extension as well in the future, obviously pending funding. So uh, that may help itself out in the future. And then one of the items that when we get into um, 5C is I do have a number for um, potential dog park fencing down there in the park. 
as well. But... And Jim, we are working on all branded signs now that we've got all of these existing trails happening that we're gonna have a consistent look with all of our trails, trail maps, with all the same look. And I think on those, we, and on the website, we can kind of hit on, you know, kind of those expectations too, on, you know, the, the leashing and things of that nature. So that can all be part of it. Yeah, because every time I've been down or like I said at the last meeting, that people just open their car doors and the dogs go running. And mm -hmm. Nobody, for the dog or anything. Yeah. Great. Well, moving on to five eight new business, uh, I'd like to discuss the eight location at Stepner Park. Um, this had actually come up before City Council, I believe it was back in 2016, was the last uh, that we had a discussion. At that point, uh, there were some thoughts or at least discussions of moving the gate as it would exist today at Stepner Park potentially either moving it back into further to the south where it would uh, split from that parking lot or maybe even the potential removal of those gates totally. Uh, at that time, there was no clear consensus and there was a lot of um, discussion from a public standpoint. And at that point, it was decided to just permanently table that to the further date. And now it's, as we're approaching some more development, particularly with this trail system running through Stepner Park, and Stepner Park being used as a uh, trailhead, that uh, we want to redo that discussion of the gate uh, at Stepner Park. Whether it's totally removed or it's located in a different location, I just wanted to really get that discussion started here at Park Board so we can get some sort of a um, recommendation coming out of this board that we can then bring to City Council as well. But first of all, um, I think obviously, Jim. And, and, and Kelly, you're a little bit newer with that. Uh, like I said we, for a number of years, this has always been the most part of a gated uh, type park. That way, it is a public park, at least not a private park. Uh, from the Youth Soccer Association does maintain the vast majority of those fields. They have put a lot of money in those fields. There's, there's no doubt about that. But at the end of the day, yes, it is still a public park. So, um, the city does uh, field a number of calls throughout the course of the year asking why. That the gates are closed when they are. Um, we try to answer those as best we can. But as I said, I think now is the time again that we want to bring this to the forefront and start having this discussion. So I'd like to, to open it up to the board at this point. Any comments, questions that they may have regarding the gates and, and the topic? So being a trailhead would mean that people wanting to use the trail would want to park in the parking lot there and then either bike down and bike back or walk one way or the other. And if we don't have parking there, then they might do it on the road, which is not a good idea either, I would imagine. It, exactly. Our goal is a beach trail at East East Denver, uh, eventually King Creek, um, well, up at the Wellness Center, and then Cosby right here at City Hall. Being four points, once again, like you said, you bring your car there, you can park it, offload the bikes, jump out of the car, start walking, what out that there generally will be some sort of rudimentary um, you know, rest facility available there uh, in case the parks that will try to have some sort of playgrounds associated with those as well. And that, uh, these, once again, you know, become a point that either people can congregate at, media, start using the parks a bit more, and they're using it once again as a, either a start off or jump off point to the trail experience throughout the city. And, and right now, yes, that we do see a number of cars queued up along that uh, gate, in particular in the evenings when it's locked. So I mean, the park is being used, but once again, people right now have to park outside of that and are walking in. Now, the one thing I, I can well, bet that soccer would want to know is how are they going to keep motorized vehicles off the fields? And all they have to do is put more or the blocks, rocks up around them. We've done that. Mm -hmm. They've done it now. Yeah, we did that. I asked Paul to do it on that back end field. Everything else is pretty well covered. We got to look at that entrance near the concession. But right now, as of right now, especially like there was a gap on that back, the back fields um, that's been taken care of. 
So. And they've even tightened up some of those other areas yeah. as well. So they've done a real good job of that better armoring the edge to meet some of the other standards. Now, I haven't seen people being that destructive of a property, especially sports fields, like they were in the early days. I mean, if people wanted to get on Fickner, they could, you know. And I mean, I I've told Eric, I've shared this probably maybe even at the last meeting, but that's a regular trail for me now. I run that. It's two and a half mile loop for me um, with the field trail. Do you know how many times I'm back there? And there's one gentleman for sure that's always back there with his three teeny kids, his dog, and they have parked over by the gate and walked. I mean, that's a lot of work with a young family. And he's not the only one, but he's frequent. Um, and I just got another email last week, the week before, my weeks are blending, but um, saying, why is this, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense. You know, it's a public park and we have very limited playground and kind of open safe space for kids to kind of run around and that and it should not be closed anymore and i think it'd be different if it was fenced off at all or anything but people can get in it already anyway yeah. so it just has always seemed kind of a little bit silly i understand their concerns but if that's never really proven to be an issue we don't see why we don't at least try it open it up see what happens and then if you know, if major destruction happens, of course, we can always, you know, come back. I mean, we can't expect, we cannot have this, I mean, even more so now. It's been an issue already, mm -hmm. but with this trail opening, and we want folks to be parking there and taking their families down on the walkway, we cannot have this closed mm -hmm. anymore. And we have done, we've done things to put in place to prevent and to your point, I mean, Jenna, it's like, if you want to take a snowmobile or a four wheeler, they can do that now. I mean, there's access to that. You're not going to get an automobile on those fields. Um, we have talked just for other safety reasons about possibly some cameras, you know, even at Keene at this location, would, you know, it will now be open too. So the police can drive back in there and loop around in there where right now they can't you know, just to see what's happening back there, which is also, I think, a positive, yeah. actually. So there's just many reasons we are going to get pushback. Um, and I'm okay with it because I, it makes complete sense for it not to be there anymore. And just for the record, and I, and I, I feel very strongly about this, um, I don't wanna just open the gate and leave it open because it forever becomes a point of argument and discussion. We need to remove at least maybe not the post, but the arms. It just, it's just it needs they need to be removed. I may I get how do you protect the soccer field for people coming up and playing on the soccer fields when they're not authorized to do so? I mean, Jim, anybody can go on the baseball fields as well. I mean, they can, I mean, to Jim, in all honesty, they can go on there now. Yeah, but base, one, there's one difference about baseball fields. There's a dirt infield, and they, they stay on the base paths ninety percent of the time, and a little, little out in the grass. But yeah, but they they, well, they never cause any damage on the pitcher field or all the baseball fields. Or, but they can get on. They can get on the Stemner fields right now. They have every right and ability to walk onto those fields right now. They just do. But I, I think mean, the biggest thing we have to worry about, Jim, is that adult or collegiate players who don't have a place to play in either Duluth or Superior, utilizing the facility up here without seeking permission or paying a fee. And one way to do that, correct that problem, would be to take the goalpost out of there in the off season to move them back where they belong or you know back to the back the nets you mean yeah the, you know go, a goalie nets goalie area yeah the net yeah. Like, yeah and that's i think those i i believe those are the soccer association's nets so that would be yeah. totally up to them um and there jim in all honesty there's probably going to be some things we're going to have to figure and communicate and that type of thing but I, I think those concerns are going to be very minor and it's going to be a huge bonus and a plus to the community to have that park open for our families and 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 for all to use. 
another concern is when teens or kids go out there and play on rainy days or right after a rain. That's what's happened to where field number uh, four is over here when my kids were playing. That used to be a soccer field. I don't know which field one. Field number four baseball. On the oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That used to be a soccer field, right? Yeah, where the little kid, young one, yeah, yeah. nine and, and ten year old. They couldn't keep the kids off after a rain, and they, they ruined the field. The city reseeded it. They couldn't keep the kids off again, ruined it again, and they resodded it. And, and that's a really low field. No, well, not number four. Isn't Which one? Are you talking about over at Fickner? Yeah, behind the fire hole. That's the field. Oh, the old behind the old uh, where this where the baseball field is now. Yeah, that used to be a soccer field. Oh, okay. I that I don't know. I don't yeah. never lived here during that time. But yeah. um, again, I mean, those are the risks that we're probably going to maybe face at some point, possibly. But we like again, that can be happening today. I mean, they have access to those fields, and I mean, we we certainly are not going to keep it closed. In the event that there was a slim possibility that that might happen, I think. Oh, I don't mean yeah. kind of close. How, how are we going to protect it so it doesn't happen? I don't, signage, communication. I mean, that's really about what I. I mean, there might yeah, be other things that we can think of doing. Um, <clears throat> but we definitely can communicate it with signage for sure. Um, uh, I know the the soccer association has connections with a lot of the other. Um, groups and associations, the collegiate level, they work with them already on tournaments and things of that nature. So I'm sure it's something that we can utilize them for, for communication as well about how and when to use that field. So. Well, I, twice a week from mid-May till the end of July, I'm spending my evenings at Lake Park and the biggest problem up there is having baseball games and soccer games going on at the same time because there is no parking it gets it but i have never i have knock on wood when there isn't a soccer uh tournament or games going on and there isn't our baseball there's nobody out there mm -hmm. so I, I think we just have to hope that people respect yeah what's going on and if they don't and we can get the police to just drive by, yeah. swing by. Because we'll occasionally get calls from different groups asking to use any of our parks for that matter. Yeah. And what I always do is I, I give them the contact information of that particular user group, which has priority of those fields, and ask them to speak to, I want to say it's president of soccer, to A, ask if they can use this, so he is their scheduling time for separate. And same thing over here. That way, yep. like, like Councilor Peterson said, it, it's it's the kind of, it's the communication. The person we're signing out there the these properties, and they're just working together with the soccer group as well. And I think some of those uses have kind of worked their way out a little bit. Um, and I, I there was a time where Stabner was super attractive because there was other limited fields, but there's since been a few more fields added throughout the rest of the city. So it's a little not as limited of access either, which has been very helpful. But um, I think that was more, I, I haven't even heard of that issue as of the last couple of years. That's been a few years now that that's been kind of a bigger concern. But, so. Well, another concern is you say the city owns that, right? How come soccer was paying $200,000 a year? What was that money for? They paid us twenty thousand dollars a year. I believe that, and my understanding is the city, the city fronted one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and that was because the, the because of our status as a nonprofit, yeah. and that's and the, the agreement was that soccer would then pay us back over a twenty year time period for that. But it's still the city's property. It's still the city's property. It's just like baseball keeps up the baseball diamonds and stuff like that. It's still city property, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and the school. Yep. And the school. They pay ten thousand dollars. The school. So they pay the money and they keep it up for the privilege of having kind of first rates. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
And that was all documented in an agreement at the development of those fields. So that's not anything new, you know. And to Eric's point, the school does pay the $10,000 for use of the baseball and, um, and softball fields. And they do also maintain the infield part of those fields as well. So, and the netting, ours are the posts, they do the nettings and the back of the batting cages and stuff. So similarities, some differences, but similar. We just have to hope that, you know, that we don't know what kind of signage you can put up at the soccer fields that, you know, they have to have a permit or permission to use it or whatever. Yeah. And then so we can have the conversation made by SA that um, either the contact number or something that yep. yeah. it's, um, and we'll work with them on that oh, signage yeah. to make sure that you know it works for that it's very clear for both parties. And but again, if they take the goalposts after the season's over with, like they do at, at the end of the year, and move them to the back, then it's just a big grass field. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I know they're always worried about. People be having goalies up there playing in the rain and digging up the area in front of the goals and stuff like that. That's a problem. But. And they have full access and you know the right to do that for sure. What has the church have they had any complaints or concerns about additional parking in their lot? Not that Okay. Mm -hmm. I can see a lot of people maybe trying to park there if they couldn't actually. Park. They have been a little bit to That's get where out. I park. Mm -hmm. And then there's that little bridge. I don't know if you call it a bridge, but <laughs> some sort of a, a walkway across there that people are using because yeah. they just want to get over there with their yeah. families. You know? I don't feel safe parking like on the side of the entrance. Yeah. Especially when there's a couple of cars there, it's it's tough. Mm -hmm. It's not a safe situation for sure. I think Jesse was trying to say something at one point. I thought maybe, or you want to check with Jesse? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right. I guess I just wanted to kind of, you know, I know you've, I've been listening in here and I, I guess my opinion on this is I'm in favor of getting rid of the, or getting rid of the gates because this is, I guess we can't lose focus that this is a public park. Um, you know, you, you could, we can kind of go back and forth on the fields are going to get tore up. This is that. That can happen anywhere. It can happen if the gates are there. I know I've been there numerous times when that park is closed with other small groups that have coordinated to have, hey, let's go play soccer this afternoon. Well, I don't care if there's a gate or not. People are going to use it. And if we build something like this in Hermantown, I guess being a resident of Hermantown, I want people to use it. I want to be proud of what we have. And I think if you open it up, I think you can also have the, you're going to get a lot of public people that are going to use it and they're going to kind of, you know, provide their own security where if they see something, you're, I'm hoping people are going to report that as like a community service. So I, I guess I'm a believer in, you know, if this is a public park, let's open it up. I would love to see people use it because I know from the people I talk to at work and in the network of people out in the community, they're really, you know, people look up to Hermantown right now for all the amenities we have. And I guess I don't want to start shutting everything down because then, you know, people aren't going to want to come to Hermantown and use that kind of stuff. And if it, if it can get my kids out of doing something wrong to go kick around a soccer ball, on an open field, I guess I'm in favor of it. It'll be a hiccup along the way. Mm -hmm. But they are well done to communication and working with the group. And, um, and honestly, like fit here is open and we've had no issues with, I mean, that I recall anything major happening with any but vandalizing or abusing or taking advantage or doing a lot of damage or whatever. I mean, we just haven't, and that's, that's open too. So um, I guess the last point I would like to say too, is I don't know who mentioned it earlier. If we're that worried about it, has anybody ever looked at what's the expense of putting a video camera up or putting a camera system up to kind of monitor the traffic that goes in and out of there? 
Yeah. We've talked about that, Jesse, for um, especially, you know, towards that back lot. And like I said, at least the police cannot, will now be able to get in there and drive around too in there and do a loop. Um, but also at Keene, because with the new trail there and that back area not as visible. So we've talked about both of those locations. So that discussion will continue. At King's Creek, there is a video camera there. Isn't there? There's a sign there that says it's it's as far as I know, or... Jim, it's just a sign. Yeah, that, that, I that don't true. tell anybody that it's run a public <laughs> meeting. Um, I mean it's to deter it, but I mean, which is not a bad thing. I mean, some people put those signs up in their yard, right? That they have a system, but they don't. Um, just to deter people, but um, yeah. So we need we, that will that will be a continued discussion. And maybe even other areas as we continue to grow on this trail, just from a safety perspective, you know. Hopping on. Gate, you got. <laughs> She's apologizing. You got cut the space there. <laughs> but so, um, do you want to go on to five B or? Actually. Uh, I think that we should have a list of both from the oh. park board. Oh, oh. and at we, least some, some sort of at least looking for a motion on the gate oh. and then a vote. Then we can just bring that formally then sure. to this council. Anybody want to make a motion? Would the motion be to remove remove the yeah, I will move to remove the gate? <laughs> Is there a motion? Is there a second? I'll second that. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Jesse, we can't see you. I'd say no. Okay. At this time. <clears throat> Jesse, if you can use the vote and you may have a on the vote. Does he need it? He might have muted. I mean, I think we know his vote, but we want to give him the formal. Jesse, are you hearing us? Yeah, I can hear you. I got cut off there for a second, but did you guys go ahead with the motion? Uh, we did the motion yeah. is to remove the gate. So okay, I'm in, I'm in favor of removing the gate. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. And then we'll just, uh, I know Mr. Mulder is uh, working a staff report that he's going to bring to the council on that for the money day as well. Great, thank you. Well, we can move then to uh, item 5B, uh, storage building in Stedford Park for H1SA. Uh, we were contacted by soccer uh, back on June 7th. They're asking for the ability for a 12 by 14 shed that they could utilize in the rear corner of the parking lot. Right now we've got a couple of dumpsters down in the, let's say the southwest quadrant of that parking lot that uh, they would like to put a new shed on that location. Uh, purpose of that is to uh, store any extra items like pennies, um, I don't know if they go as far as soccer balls, but cones, different things like that, that each cone should have the ability to access if need be. Uh, soccer has indicated that they would um, Purchase it themselves. It's something that um, since that they get it, it's something that Home Depot uh, is need just on skids. It would not be a permanent structure per se, anchored to a foundation, but uh, it's something that um, once again could be a supply source for them to potentially move if need be. They're not using the new current building, or are they running out of room? They're running out of room. That was one of the discussions myself with Paul Sast. He said, you know, do we have a different locking mechanism on that existing building so coaches could access that? But it sounds like that uh, soccer needs some additional room. That's what their request is. So right on that corner of the, they're going to keep it on the concrete. Yes, exactly. At least in the corner of the parking lot. They figured they would lose a couple of parking spots down in that area. But for the most part, that should be just fine. And it won't, because I know the trail will run, runs right now down and then around, which is not showing on this. 
but that won't impede on that trail. No, it will not. Okay. The trail is set back, um, it's set back off that parking. Yeah. Okay. As long as they keep it on the the pavement and don't impact that trail, mm -hmm. that would be nice. But, uh, I apologize. I uh, I indicated in soccer that it'd be nice to have a representative here tonight to explain. Unfortunately, uh, no one's in attendance. <coughs> Do we need a motion on that, or is that uh, just a? I think once again, it'd be nice to have a motion so we can bring it, give it back to them that way. Is there a motion to let soccer put an extra little building on storage shed? Yeah, I'll make a motion to allow soccer to put up the storage building. Okay, Jim, second. I'll second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. Or raise your hand. Yeah, aye. 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 <laughs> we hear you now, Jesse. Thank you. Great, thank you. So then moving on to kind of item 5C. Uh, this is a, this eight and a half by 14 sheet here that I've uh, put on your desk. Uh, what I've been doing is working with uh, both um, Kevin Moore, who's our city finance director, as well as John Mulder. So where are we uh, to date with our park dedication fund? Obviously, there's a lot of money uh, going back and forth between these trail completions. And uh, what are some anticipated funding coming forward, as well as uh, future park projects associated with it? So right now, after we've paid and gotten current on all of our invoices associated with the trails, there's approximately $68,000 remaining within the park dedication fund. Uh, we still have $403,000 associated with the trail grant that's used, once again, directly for that project. So with available funds, we're probably $471,000 to complete our trail work that we have. Uh, between the Section 24, uh, as well as the King Creek work, there's approximately about well, there are four hundred twenty-two thousand dollars remaining work that puts us at a balance of plus or minus forty-nine thousand dollars. As you notice, I do have the Keen Creek Trail charge or change order as left blank. That is what I indicated a little bit earlier that we're waiting on that number. Um, that will obviously change that balance that we have. Uh, I will continue to work with Kevin Moore as well as David Gold, our city engineer. Are there things that have been uh, Build to park dedication and the grant that can be switched over to um, sales tax, for instance. So once again, to keep at least the park dedication in a positive uh, fund balance, that is the goal of this. So that's something that we're going to be continuing working on here over the next couple months as these final invoices come through on the trail work that way. Um, we do have uh, four fairly large projects that are on the rather near horizon here. Uh, that's, that's indicated in the second set of numbers here. Uh, we have the Jenny Farms, which is a nine lot subdivision uh, located just west of Maple Grove, excuse me, uh, Midway Road and Maple Grove. Uh, you can see that obviously there's two sources of, of park dedication. Is what we get for the number of lots and number of units. That's eleven hundred dollars per each one of those. And then we also get what's called a bedroom fee. So at the time of a building permit, if you build a four-bedroom home, you are charged one hundred and fifty dollars per bedroom for that, which goes into park dedication as well. So what I've done under that total column is I have both the number of units as well as anticipated bedroom fees associated for each one of these projects. So, for instance, on the Jenny Farms, uh, that can generate uh, approximately fifteen thousand uh, dollars. We're working with the developers of what's called Peyton Acres. That's a subdivision on Stebner Road, the south of Maple Grove Road. If you're heading on that, if you look to the east, you can see the existing road through there. Uh, they're going to be coming in for their second phase uh, for that uh, within the next month or so. Uh, that's anticipated to be another 11 lots with that. And once again, the associated bedroom and such, that could be upwards of uh, $18,000, $19,000. Uh, right now, we have, and actually that's what I'm doing later on tonight, is the King Creek Trail Subdivision. 
This is the property located at the northeast intersection of Oakstrom and Morris Thomas Road. It's a 29 lot subdivision that's proposed right there. So uh, with the potential park dedication and lots, that's almost 32,000. And then obviously bedroom could be upwards to 15 with that. So potential 47,000 for that. And last, one other large project that has been approved but has not uh, come under construction yet is what's known as the Pillars of Permit Town. That's a senior assisted living building, essentially right across the street from us, over here on the Bay and uh, Maple Grove. Uh, between the number of units and the bedrooms for that, that's approximately fifty-six thousand dollars for that. So all told, these are projects that are occurring over the 21, 22, almost twenty-three cycle. Uh, how it usually works is that we received a lot for the unit park dedication at the time of approval for these projects for the first permit. And then the bedroom fees come later as lots are sold, buildings come in and online that way. So we get these traditionally at two different times throughout the process. Uh, this is trying to take a conservative view of what we know is happening, uh, at least just moving forward once again over the next essentially 12 to 24 months here. So that's plus or minus $137,000 anticipated to come in. Uh, the city, on average, does do probably what we call lot splits, um, almost one a month, but to be conservative, it's between one every two months, and that generates another six to ten thousand dollars a year just on these residential lot splits. That come in. That's just some of the random homes. Exactly. I mean, we also have the random homes being built here or there that are filling in these developments that go mm -hmm. that aren't accounted for either. Yeah, exactly. So there's traditionally you know, always you know, some sort of money is coming in here as well. Uh, and lastly, as part of it, I did not include that number yet. Um, we have as part of the, the city's financial management plan, starting in 2022, there'll be uh, potentially $100,000 each year going into the park dedication fund to serve as seed money for future grant opportunities, et cetera, that way. So that's, you know, that's the goal that we're going to keep working towards that. Each year doing that. So then, lastly, future park work. And these are things that uh, obviously we discussed here at the board and uh, some just different um, thoughts looking at what we call our um, capital improvement projects uh, over the next few years here. So, obviously, when we were out at uh, Pickner, particularly there in field two, that we realized that there's dugout issues. Uh, Paul has been getting this prices for that and essentially looking at $20,000 for a replacement of those dugouts. Uh, that's something that we know needs to be done. We anticipated the earliest that would happen would be this fall or something like that. Uh, obviously, skate park repairs, we've all seen that. Uh, Paul has um, located the source of the uh, Black Better Reserve boards for that. Uh, he has one of his uh, members of the park. Uh, or the public work staff is going to be working on that. Paul's just trying to free up time for that person to replace those boards. We're anticipating that's about $5,000 to make those repairs out there. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Clean Creek Dog Park, uh, this is in an open turf area that's adjacent to the fields. Uh, plus or minus coming in about uh, 37000 for that. We just try to make that a little higher. Just to cover ourselves. Jim looks like you have a question. Yes. When we voted on that last week about looking into it, this isn't written in stone, is it? The dog park at Kings Creek? It's not written in stone yet, no. You were just going to look into that. Is there any, uh, did you come up with anything about uh, DNR looking into dog park that close to the crib? I've not done that yet. And honestly, the, um, I mean, our, our trail is much closer, to tell you the truth, but I have not done that yet. I think we just were looking at, like, what would the cost be and looking at the overall funding first, you know, and then kind of looking into, does that location make the most sense? What are those types of things that we have to consider from an environmental standpoint and that type of thing? So this is the first initial. Kind of the first blush that way. Yeah. Um, we were uh, down there with uh, Paul Sensen and John Mulder a couple of weeks ago. And, and this ties into a little later conversation, but we're kicking around even so what happens if 
the baseball field and converted it over to a dog park. And at that point, we said, no, we're not comfortable with that. That's an existing asset. We want to keep that mm -hmm. as baseball, as softball. We don't want to turn that field over to a dog park because once it goes that road, it, it's tough to get it back. Yeah. yeah. Well, one thing I don't see on here is fixing the backstop. Those, 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 these are, um, that gets to the next thing. These are, these are like large items that, you know, identify, you know, thousands and tens of thousands of dollars for that. You know, the next item on 5D, it's the uh, park, uh, park repair projects. So, and then we, I've got more information to share regarding that. So, yeah, I did not get into you know, something that is for $500 or $2,000. This is more looking at bigger picture, bigger picture that way, bigger ticket. And then, um, obviously, with um, the Keen Creek, as part of that trail project, we are pouring a concrete pad, similar to what we did at Stepner. And so, once again, to utilize Keen Creek as a trail pad, we want to have one or two picnic tables, uh, bench, trash, receptacle, bike rack. That same type of branding that we've already had in Stepner Park, bring that same type of equipment down there, install it on that pad, and you know, start turning this a little bit more over into a, a park that people get on a daily usage that way. And then on that same vein is uh, we strive to have a playground in each one of our parks. And so we don't have one in King Creek. And now with more people coming through there, more people being able to utilize that, that um, that's something that we've identified in what's called our capital improvement projects for a Keen Creek playground somewhere in the next three to five years happening down there. And it's something if we can break that free earlier, we'll look at that possibility. But same thing, plus or minus ball parking was forty thousand dollars by the time by the play equipment, uh, borders, etc. That way. And then lastly, as part of it, as Councilor Peterson is, is indicated, is trail signage. Is looking at a total branded um, signage system through all the park that way. Uh, right now, we have a placeholder of plus or minus ten thousand dollars for that. And obviously, Joe Wickland, he's our communications director. He's been uh, taking the lead on looking at some different signage options that way. So we'll continue to work with him as that moves along, gets more permit pricing associated with that as well. But said, these are these are looking at the, the larger type of items that way. And then um, as we move into it in our last item, uh, we can get into some more of those details that were repairs that way. But at this point, are, are there any questions or uh, thoughts regarding where we are from a budget standpoint? Uh, any, once again, these larger type of projects that way? Has there, <coughs> has there been any word about the Pickner Ed Fitted uh, initiative through the Senate uh, after 10 sales tax? Yeah, the, um, and you may have more information than I do, but it's, it is, I believe they're still reconciling the bills. Is that where they're at? So the House and the Senate both had it in their bills, and but their language was different mm -hmm. and their amounts were different. Um, and so the committee met and finalized basically the bill. Um, and we received that yesterday morning. Um, and they had the three projects in there. Fickner was part of it, but the mounts were all hung. Um, it just came down to, I think, somebody going, reconcile this. We have this here, this here, combine it. And they just did it. So we emailed um, Senator Bach's office last night or this morning. Um, but we had a work session last night just around the recreation initiative um, and said, FYI, uh, this is not correct. And so um, I just got an email from Joe Wickland, um, who's working on the legislative side and box office was like, okay, I'll work to get this corrected. Immediately, um, we received, um, I, I'm reading this because I haven't even read this in full yet, but um, Tom Bach, who's very always responsive, was great, said, yep, um, he would see, he CC'd, he sent an email, CC'd Senator Nelson, who chairs the group, um, as well as his top support person. And then we heard from the legal counsel, counsel for the tax committee to get the right information. So at this point, Jim, um, I would, if I was a betting person, I would put all of my chips in on all of the parks being included and the dollar amount being what we had expected and anticipated and that we will be in the tax bill. The biggest question is, will the tax bill go forward? 
because there's a lot, a lot around the tax bill that needs to be agreed upon, unfortunately, and it becomes down to politics. Yeah. So it's if the time, yeah. Right now, yeah. Yes. So if that goes through, gets approved, there will be a whole community initiative recreation like a hawk pride to that will work with you know the community and communication and advocating for the referendum vote come fall of 2022. So some of that stuff like uh, that uh, Kings Creek and stuff could be paid and Pickner Park could be paid through through that initiative if it, if it passes. It's Pickner can, the King Creek is not identified yeah. as part of that, no. but it, it frees up other monies that could yeah. be earmarked for Pickner to do these other areas. It expands our pot of money, which would be- Unless it's trail oriented. Yeah, that's, that's true. Unless it's trail oriented, then that would impact Keen. But um, but anything else would not be. So it's it's focused on the trails, Fickner, and the second sheet uh, connected to the first sheet, um, and that was all based on what the highest needs really were for the community. I feel the good news is that Fickner is still involved in the initiative. That's. And it always was for us, just to clarify that. It right. was, and the House had it right, but the Senate put it through with About it. one. And I mean, that's, there's so many moving parts and so many projects that they're working on. I, I don't think it was intentional. I, I think it was somewhat of an oversight or, or something political where somebody said, I don't think it should be in and it got dropped. I mean, you just don't even know. But the, the, the key part is, is the money that they've got allotted is there for all three of those fields. We just are waiting for the final language and final amount. Excellent. Yeah, definitely necessary. So to your point, some of the Fickner things, it just doesn't make sense to invest right now in some of these things because we, you know, the hope is, is that this goes through the referendum passes and we can make the, the you know, the right changes there instead of some band-aids a little bit. Sorry, I didn't want to steal. No, no, that's, I don't think it is what it is down there. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe there's any other questions. Uh, I move on to the last item, which is uh, part of the third project, it's number 5D. And that's this other uh, memo that I handed up before the meeting. What I did was utilized uh, obviously this year's park walk through read the back and notes for the past year or two and other outstanding items associated with this and uh wrote this down at a, a park by park basis in particular in Victor where we have multiple elements uh try to break it down into a field by field type of basis that way uh and then said this is getting any more of those uh the smaller type projects the ones that are easier to basically bite off and take care of that way um, we could just run through this just briefly in different things. Uh, items like on field one, static storage helmet, if you recall, beat up, broken up, uh, power moved those on Friday. Um, paper the concession building, uh, those are all heaving and need to be removed and relayed. But once again, that gets into more of are we going to create a funding for Fickner because that would potentially change that whole thing. Uh, likewise, uh, AD in, in concrete and bituminous um, paving throughout the park. And that's a big item that gets into you know, more of a master planning and, and, and source of large funding for the park as well. We do realize that that needs to happen. And um, if, 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 if the initiation goes, it gives us a lot of opportunities. If it doesn't, we'll continue to look for some different grants to be able to take care of those things also. Like we did with Stebner. Exactly, exactly. Um, there's various, I mean, all the different dugouts, or at least three of the dugouts are in different states of repair, just repair, etc. Uh, we're working with Jim Rich on what can we do in some of these ones that are concrete that are missing pieces. Is it as simple as uh, filling them in a couple blocks that way? Is it uh, more as extreme as it feels too, where it needs to be a remove and replace type of scenario that way? We try to be cognizant uh, where we can that. 
it will be replaced to say in the near term and then be salvaged if there is a greater rebuild of a particular park. And for instance, the, uh, the new batting cage that was just added in over at field one, uh, those are actually sleeved into the concrete. So we do have the ability to pull those out and reuse those in a different location. Uh, likewise, uh, any sort of um, chain linking or these dugouts, you know, to try to work as best we can to salvage those if need be, if we do some repair work here soon, and then two, three, four years down the line, we find out we have money available otherwise. Uh, same thing with Bill 2, the same issues. Uh, the debt will repair, uh, we're, we're still doing budgeting uh, for that 2022 uh, cycle year as best we can. ADA that gets into that previous comment. Uh, field three, the same thing, done over here, and that one is actually missing that we're missing that concrete block piece. Uh, the roof on that is getting a little uh, old, worn. Uh, it's the same, it's one of two things. Pick and redo, big pot of money, easy to address. Otherwise, it's, it's budgeting for it. Uh, lack of plastic ADA accessibility. Um, in field four, we uh, need potential backstop repair. There's so one blocking. Can I read that one? Does it seem to be functioning well that way, or do we need to come to a additional piece of chain link? And that's something that um, you know, we'll reach out further to HYSA. Is this working for you? So we talk to the baseball. So is this working for you as it is right here? Or do you think you need some repairs for that? Um, basketball court, we put in the new net on Friday. Uh, Blacktop repair and steel coating throughout the whole park system that had been initially since 2022 capital improvement plan that was removed. Uh, we looked to uh, try to get that back in the 2023 cycle, and that would cover not only the basketball court but the parking lot over there at Fickner as well. Uh, concession building, we have that uh, door that needs to be replaced, that sliding door that we have. Uh, Paul's going to be getting pricing on that, looking to do that in 2022. And we should start budgeting for a roof replacement probably in the next three to five years. Uh, that's assuming that's not a total building we do with the greater source. Uh, skate park, as I said, uh, approximately four to five thousand for materials. Uh, trying to break through that staff number to uh, to get that fixed or repaired that way. We know that's a big big item that we need to address. We've had that discussion in house here as well. Uh, likewise, to black topping, there's some significant cracking and such over there uh, that would be addressed as, as part of the larger uh, black topping type problem there. Let me just touch briefly on the, uh, the parking lot there. Uh, going on this, I mean, I'm, all, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Eric, yep. before you go on. Um, I don't know. I'm not an expert in this. I'm not going to pretend to, but are, are there, if there's significant enough cracks, does a crack seal help on any of that? Is, does that make sense? There's so many, that, yeah, there's like a certain gap that you can cover with that. And uh, I'd have to, to work and call on that. Okay. It's, um, the same I, thing, if it comes after a certain point, if this like roll, is it a mill and overlay sort of situation? You pull it out and you put down another two or three inches that way. I just, we're going to have to be thoughtful if the gaps are big enough that we've got major tripping hazards for little kids or things of that nature. So I, I haven't walked that part. So just. Yep, exactly. And then you this thing, and then skate park, and it does it catch a, a wheel on some of these right. skateboards or right. things like that as well? Yeah. We just don't want anybody to get injured from it. I guess I'll just, I'll, I'll give the, the board an opportunity at the end of each park to maybe have questions, comments, et cetera. So I said, Fickner, is there anything else from this group that, hey, what about this, or what's the timeline on that? Well, makes sense to me. Let's hope we get bigger dollars that we can do major changes. We have like to sure we had a nice dry spring. Yeah, yeah, it helped. And is there any question, <clears throat> any reports back from the high school if they plan on doing anything up there for either softball or baseball? So we're at Pickner or? Oh, no, the high school itself. Oh, at high school. <laughs> I mean, they got that nice log. Are they still going to use that just as a practice for football? They resodded that whole. Oh, the backfield? Yeah. That's just for practice for football, as far as I understand it. Yeah. 
and, for, and for the youth, not just practice for high school, but the youth programs use that as well. I know that. I, I have not heard of anything else, but as far as baseball, softball, I don't think that's even on their radar anymore or, at all. Unless there's something different that I'm not aware of. Heard of no, but I know that's the question. Yeah. yeah exactly. I, John Mulder, at least with um, uh, when Terry was there, he would try to have a monthly meeting. I believe he's trying to do that same thing with Wall, just to keep that uh, communication. Yeah, back. I think they're meeting this week. Is it okay? Great. I think it's. I think so. They they have a meeting coming up. I know that. Okay. Now that COVID is lifted a little bit, they can. Yeah. Um, Stevener, um, we talked about for a long time. The swing sets in all of our parks. Get some longer chain in there. Uh, we're the pauses. Get that in by Fourth of July, so we get that taken care of. Yeah. Uh, Jim Rich did inspect the concrete block wall and he's going to coordinate a repair. He said the plan on the work in the late summer, early fall this year. So he did review that this past week and he's going to coordinate that work. Uh, Reed Felton spoke to HYSA. They're going to remove that existing picket board. Good. Yeah. It so looks bad. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I mean, Stepper, um, Jim is always in pretty good shape. I think that he said that we, we secured those fields, at least from a rock standpoint. And um, let's continue to work with them as this case scenario is moving forward. Kelly, do you believe me? I have T-ball. Okay. Oh. Well, thanks for being here. <laughs> Sorry. T-ball right. Kelly, do you have any thoughts or questions on anything before you go quick? I mean, no, that you want I to talk do it. Well, You're good? Okay. Just making sure. Okay. Uh, Rolls Road, a uh, new batting cage is going to be installed after the softball field in August. They will be located in that same location as the existing one is. I know, Jim, you have that question. I'm going to ask that one. Uh, the benches for 303 are on back order. The Paul's trying to expedite those. We anticipate they're not going to get here until the first week of July. Everything is on back order. Mm -hmm. uh, they have installed snow fencing for that L field on uh, field three. Um, that relates to the contract request to try to keep people off that uh, in outfield for the turf establishment. Um, I did a couple items down. I said that uh, this is what the work has been done so far. The contractor under the warranty uh, installing different uh, basically turf and some different. Uh, they're trying to get better growing medium in that soil out there to help those bare that we have. They put down some different. Uh, Weeds, for lack of better words, uh, working with some different seed mixes and different starters to keep that going. I was out there, let's say, mid last week. It looked a little better, but there are still obviously bare patches of that outfield. So um, this is something that we continue to work with them on. But they have indicated they need the contractor A plus is that they are going to continue to mold and water to irrigate that outfield. So. Uh, if you, well, when I was out there, you can see that you could use a mowing, get a little, get a little thick that way. But uh, if you get any comments or you see it, just let me know that that is that's the responsibility of the contractor. <coughs> and they're trying to just to, just to help that with that turf establishment. I feel like we've been talking about A plus for a really long time. A long time. <laughs> it's been yep. ah. It's been a long time. Well, I have something number the road to roll through. I looked on my list from 2016. That fence along on field number one, mm -hmm. the fence along the third baseline is still up about that far. We're poking through the uh, dugouts. Uh, or because I know Paul, I talked to Paul about that, and, and that was supposed to be fixed here either just recently or shortly. Okay. Yeah. But uh, before it wasn't really a concern because the little kids play on that. Mm -hmm. But when the high school plays there, the JV team plays on that team. Somebody's sliding in or going after a ball to get their leg cut underneath that fence, and it's more of getting to be more of a safety item than a, you know, it's, it's, it's a hazard. And then on uh, dugout, on uh, field number two is on that list where one of the posts for the fence. Is inside the dugout. Yeah, but that's one that's heaved up to the roof that way. Yeah, that's what I spoke to him specifically about that. And he said that that was being addressed in Paul. So I will verify that with him. They know, yeah, that it's been pulled into that roof. Yeah, it's pushing the roof up yep. about four or five inches now. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I know it's a constant battle with these fences he makes yeah. each and every year. But that's just part of his, his ongoing maintenance budget is just knocking these things down again. Well, that's why I think some of these new fields and stuff, they don't put concrete on the on the fence posts anymore. They just drive them in. And that way you can go back and pound them in again later. But if you got concrete around the, the post, you can't do that anymore. Yeah, you can't do it. And, and I'm trying to think, I don't know about fence insulations. If like you know the corner posts that you traditionally have to concrete those in just to provide that stability. But yeah, but it, the ground, especially when our parks are wet, it wants to spit these things out. And uh, constant battle every year for us. But that was on my list from yeah, it's been 2016. Yeah, just okay. Jesse texted me. He had to sign off. He has a baseball game at six. Oh, okay. So just letting you all know. Um, over the Rose Road, uh, Lightful and that sign needs to be reinstalled. It's the ball that needs to be done. So they're going to be done in August of this year. Did he say why August? I'm just curious. It's, he's trying to coordinate projects. Okay. With the, uh, because that's basically he's going to have the. Um, the, the grinder out yeah. there for the uh, what's it called uh, the post the dog dogs in there for oh. but the batting cage as well. Oh, okay, okay. Get the most useful. Yeah, try to do it all. Yeah, the easiest to rent all that equipment. The new batting cage at Vicker looks nice. He did a really nice Those job. Those posts. Mm -hmm. And he's working on the uh, he ordered the crumb router and then just trying to work with that existing pad that's in there. Like a pull it to the center a bit more oh. in there. That was a big machine. Yeah, he said that um, each one of those are seven to eight feet deep. Oof. And um, but they kept on hitting groundwater in one of them, so the most that they could get up to five feet. So that is, is worry up at Rose is how much groundwater they can hit on these things. Yeah. Because there's such a massive yeah. type of supports on those things. Yeah. So, um, welcome to Herman Town. I'm sorry. Welcome to Herman Town. Yeah. Yeah. We got water everywhere. The big thing in Keene Creek is, if I've had a conversation with Hermantown Baseball, what are your plans, what are your thoughts for that field? And they came back uh, late last week saying that they are interested, and I'd ask if it's coming tonight, <laughs> with that field. And they're wondering if there's an opportunity to partner with the city to get that in shape for play. Now, what is that? Is that a brand new dugouts, brand new bad, you know, backstops, fencing, et cetera, et cetera? What's the extent of that? So we need to continue our conversations. And are you looking at this as a field, or I'm sorry, as a practice. game field or a practice field? Because that'll really look at the dynamics of what we have to do to that field to make it work. But at least there seems to be preliminary indication that they want to partner with us to work on that field. Well, I think we need a list of what that means to them. Mm -hmm. And so we all have the same expectations mm -hmm. that way. So that may start to answer a little bit of your questions, too, but well, I think the first thing, whether it's going to be a practice field or a play field, the backstop has to be fixed. You can't practice on a field when you pass balls when the fence is up that high around the backstop. It's impossible. Yeah, that and the same thing I'd say we want to do one at once. So if we're like bringing the whole new system. And um, and right now I'm talking to baseball, they say, oh yeah, that's right, we can use that. It's like, I don't think it's getting the use down there at all by anybody. And um, so, but yeah, that, that would be a conversation. Like that. It's a little bit of a chicken and an egg, you know, like, is it in the condition for them to use it? You know, yeah. I mean, or, I mean, do we fix it so they'll use it? Or, you know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> do we want them to be using it so it makes sense for us to fix it? And, but we just, I think it all comes down to like, we just need to get together and say, what, what is your intended use? Mm -hmm. And what is your idea of what needs to happen for it to be available for what your expectations are and how you want to use it? Because uh, the field, the grass field is in excellent shape. The infield is all weeds. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, even for a practice, is the backside is going to be fixed. I mean, not replaced right now, but the lower fence maybe has to be replaced. Okay, yeah, but that let remember that wrong is down yep. that way the tie is used up. Mm -hmm. Well, and my daughter, when they played softball, um, they would practice on that field. So I don't know if people are using it and just not. You know, they just would use it when there was no other space anywhere. Right. So people probably are. We just don't even informal. No, informally using it. Yeah. 
So, and I agree, it's pretty hard. I'm gonna have people chasing balls yep. back in that backstop area. But. And then, um, and really hit on these other three items that increase the, uh, the band picking tables, et cetera, uh, potential playground, as well as um, dog park that way. So, um, well, those are all projects potentially here for the fall of 21 or into 22, 23. That way, because obviously, playgrounds and, and um, dog parks are getting more capital expenditures that way. Just to help everybody out, because when we, we hit over $20,000, we call it capital improvement project. So, we start budgeting for those things. Mm -hmm. You know, we look at a series of five years increments and try to um, forecast these things and just so we're able to have the money available when the time comes. And what about that walkway, Eric, with the heaving on the walkway at Keene? That's all been removed That's as part all. of the trail. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, yep. So what we I've did walked is, past that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. The um, initially, when they cut in the trail, it was extremely close to the out for the fencing for the King Creek baseball field, and because they need to have some ditching for water conveyance, we said no, pull that away from that fence a bit more, but pour a, a, a bituminous pathway to that oh. existing opening. In that Great. Fence. So that'll be a nice thing to come off that. You can walk right into it. Same thing, it's accessible. You can get at it. That, way. Uh, that solved that problem. Yeah, so that's that been be, existing. Yeah, it's, 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 but it's part of it. Um, we lost some of that green, big, grassy area because we had to burn. Yeah. These are burned as regular soils on site. We had so much that muck material, they started creating a burn along the edge of that grassy area and the baseball field. So when we go down there in a month's time, you'll see it's like, oh, that looks different because that's a lot of that material. Is that, you hate to say it, it costs $3 a square foot to do that. It costs $15 a square foot to haul away. Yes. And when you're talking hundreds of trucks, you sometimes have to do that. Sort of Plus stuff. the traffic. And yep, the exactly. So, um, it's kind of in a nutshell, different projects. Uh, I've tried to get some times on these things, and some don't, but I mean, these are oh. the two things that we need. To I love this do. document. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Really nice job on the financial document and this. I don't That's think helpful. I've ever seen that before. No, I like that, Eric, a lot. So do it again. <laughs> well, it's just something maintain that, it. We need to exactly maintain it. That's right. Yeah. yeah exactly. No, no, it's. I like the way you did that. But uh, they're really, uh, at least, it gets us to the new business. Um, as far as communications, uh, no, we've not received any communications coming in. So, again, I'm going to throw back to you for the board member reports. Oops. Anybody got anything to report? Jim? No. Um, I don't know how to talk about it. <laughs> Jenna? There is any. Nope. Well, Jesse's off, but yeah. I just was going to give the recreation update, but I already did that. So. <laughs> yeah. Motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. <laughs> Second by Jim. All those favors say aye. Um, okay. we're running out of bodies to do it so <laughs> it's a good thing you guys didn't want to stay here all night <laughs> you're all very well known for the planning tonight yeah so uh, Jeez, uh, i can imagine i think we're going to have uh, a showing at the council on monday as well